Good evening. This meeting is being recorded. Welcome to Oak City Community Church Bible Study. We are happy to have you. Would you please bow for a word of prayer? Father, in the name of Jesus, we come before you this evening. We thank you, Lord, for all the many wonderful blessings you have allowed us to see. You thank you for each and every one that's gathered in your name. Father, we just come giving you honor, glory, and praise. And Father, we ask you to send your Holy Spirit. Father, we ask you to let us learn of your word and your will in our lives more and more. Father, we just thank you. We ask you to bless the sick and afflicted all around the land and country. We ask you to bless every church door to stand open in your name, every saint. Father, help them to do what you have us to do. And then, Lord, those that stand in darkness, let them see you in us and ask, what must I do to be saved? Father, we just come thanking you. And we just ask you to bless this meeting tonight. In Jesus' name, I do pray. Amen. Amen. Also, Amen. at this time, we're going to ask Brother Sherman Tyler to read a scripture. Okay, maybe he's not available. So, uh, could we have a volunteer to read a scripture, please? I can do my phone off. Oh, okay. I can hear you anymore. All right. Um, if I wasn't saying anything, I was turning pages. Oh, I'm sorry. In the, in the beginning, God created the heaven and the earth, and the earth was without form and void, and darkness was upon the face of the deep, and the Spirit of God moved upon the face of the waters. And God said, let there be light, and there was light. And God saw the light that it was good, and God divided the light from the darkness, and God called the light day, and the darkness he called night, and the evening and the morning were the first day. And God said, let there be a firmament in the midst of the waters, and let it divide the waters from the waters, and God made the firmament and divided the waters which were under the firmament from the waters which were above the firmament. And it was so. Always amazed by those first few base phrases because I cannot get my mind around at all being able to speak things into the creation. I can understand dividing waters, I can understand raising the dead, but speaking things to creation beyond my comp comp uh, composition, uh, comp above what I can understand, always makes my head hurt just to think about it. Okay. Thank you so much. At this time, we are going to be blessed with a song by Sister Haley. My baby. <laughs> uh, I've never actually like tried to sing this, so bear with me. <laughs> Father, this kindness you have poured out grace. You brought me out of darkness. You have filled me with peace. Give of mercy on my time, my help, and time of need. Lord, I can't help but sing. Faithful you are, faithful 
forever you will be faithful you are all your promises are yes and amen all your promises are yes and amen beautiful savior you have brought me near you pull me from the ashes you have broken every curse blessed redeemer you have said this captive free Lord, I can't help but see faithful you are faithful forever you will be faithful you are. All your promises are yes and amen. All your promises are yes and amen. Oh, in faithful you are. And faithful forever you will be. Faithful you are, all your promises are yes and amen, all your promises, all your promises are yes and amen, oh. and I will rest. In your promises, my confidence is your faithfulness, and I will rest in your promises. My confidence is you are faithful, and I will rest in your promises. My confidence is your faithfulness, and I will rest in your promises. My confidence oh, is you are faithful, oh, and faithful you are, and faithful. Forever you will be faithful, you are. All your promises are yes and amen, oh, and faithful, you are. Oh, and faithful, forever you will be. And faithful you are, and all your promises are yes and amen. All your promises, all your promises are yes and amen. All your promises, all your promises are yes and amen. Amen. Thank you so much. Appreciate that. All your promises. Yes and amen. Amen. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. At this time, we're going to open the floor up for spoken word. Do we have a volunteer for spoken word tonight? Um, I'm going to volunteer Alyssa. I, may, I told her 30 minutes ago to prepare a spoken word and she said, I didn't have nothing. I said, go up there and pray and prepare a spoken word. So, Alyssa, you're on, honey. <laughs> so we're rolling in the beach house, huh? Okay. <laughs> Alyssa. So, spoken word by Alyssa. 
Amen. Okay. Mighty Lura. <clears throat> I thought I was tired of my hands being weak. I was frustrated and disappointed by my own strength. And it was easy to say that I was at fault because of what I couldn't do rather than what I did not. Because isn't that what we love to say? That the problem is our lack of strength, not our lack of faith or our will to obey. When we believe that mountains are stiff in our past because they're too big for us to move rather than the truth, that maybe he causes those mountains to rise because when the road gets too easy, then so does our pride. That maybe like David, he causes those giants to taunt us as a subtle remind reminder that God still got us. We love to be the champion rather than the hands and feet, but with God, our victories come sweetest with humility. Wow. Amen. Did you just write that? Amen. <laughs> Go sweet. That was good and quick. <laughs> she got oh. out of that pretty quick. Hey, <laughs> hey, 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 it's funny. She was mad at me. She was looking at me crazy when I told her. <laughs> I, I don't think very many teens do that. No teens do that, right? Wow. <laughs> Come on. Like that. <laughs> How could a teenager possibly look at you and, you know, the parent and be mad or disagree with anything? <laughs> but 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 she listened to my instruction. She went in there and prayed. So I can't I can't talk about her being mad. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, great, great job. I love what she put in the chat too. God be the glory. <laughs> wow. Amen. 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 Beautiful. I just love that the children take the lead and and just are not afraid. They stand up boldly for God. And I just. That's a great example, I'm going to say. Amazing. Amen. Thank you so much. At this time, we're going to introduce our teacher tonight, Pastor John. Welcome. Amen. Praise God. Praise God. Um, is there any, are there any other testimonies real quick, just before we get started? Pastor Bobby, did you have something to say? Oh, no, sir. I was just adjusting my screen. Thank you. I got you. I do, I do like, uh, I do like what Alyssa um uh, that's what we're worried about. You know, she kind of taught us that giants have a purpose. So, <laughs> you know, that that um, <laughs> that was really good. It really was. Giants have a purpose. <laughs> giants All tools. Have a purpose, man. All tools. Yeah. yeah. Giants have a purpose. That's, that that'll preach. <laughs> yes, sir. That'll preach. Yes, sir. Yeah, it's already, and it's, and it's not what the giant thinks it is. <laughs> <laughs> he didn't play. <laughs> right. Uh, <laughs> wow. Just some like of, the princes I, of his world. <laughs> some of us, some of us are facing giants with a purpose. No, wait a I second. Mean. Wait a second. Does that mean there's no such thing as a giant that doesn't have a purpose? <laughs> I'm trying to just play this out. Of my mind. Uh, uh. Pretty much. Obstacles just have a purpose. <laughs> yeah. Yes, sir. Yeah. Yes, sir. Wow. That obstacle we, we worried about. That obstacle yeah. that you hate, the obstacle you're thinking about right now, yeah. it has a purpose. Yes, sir. Wow. That's deep. I like what Brittany put in chat. <laughs> <laughs> Uncle Daryl said that first. He said, "Sounds oh. like the princes of this world." <laughs> oh, you got missed your chat. <laughs> All right. Facing has a purpose, yes, and that sir. purpose is not um, what well, purpose. I mean, the enemy right. has it for, right. there for a reason. And that reason is to destroy you. But God is allowing it there for a reason. And Amen. God's reason is more relevant than the enemy's reason. <laughs> <laughs> so, so even though... curve you to make you to draw you in closer to make you more fortified to give you more strength to give you more purpose to add meaning to your family to bless generations whatever the enemy is doing god's <laughs> gonna reverse it <laughs> to make it make it work for your good <laughs> it's 
purpose. Amen. <laughs> I mean, did anything anything bad happen to any child of God in the Bible and they just wished it had never happened? Mm. I mean, in the story, just ended like, boy, they messed, messed them up for the rest of their life. Mm. Mm. They could have been great if, they, if it had not occurred. Mm. Wow. Good point. That's a lady yeah. question. And, 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 and a, lot, a lot of bad things happen. You know, mm -hmm. and I think about all the New Testament beatings and stuff like that. And, and what mm -hmm. happened when they were beaten, you know, and, and Paul Stone and stuff and shipwreck. What happened after all that stuff? Mm -hmm. We never got to that point where if that just hadn't happened, he could have gone on the planet <laughs> church. If that hadn't happened, I would have, you know, <laughs> reached a lot more people. You know, if that hadn't right. happened, you know, nothing, you know, it, it always propels it. You right. Know, it Amen. always propels it. <laughs> You know, just just amazing. You know, we go back to Goliath and the giant. I mean, did it, what happened? Is that like? I mean, was that made David more fortified? I mean, did he something good happen or bad happen to him? After that? <laughs> <laughs> I mean, just it's just amazing. How just like it's all like uh, they all getting used. <laughs> they all getting used. You know, Amen. God had many tools he used to develop his own. And uh, sometimes he used the giants, sometimes he used a screwdriver, sometimes he used a hammer, sometimes he used a plier, you know, whatever it is, whatever tool he chooses to use, you know, he's working on us, you know, we're, we're his workmanship, his handiwork, you know, so he used different tools, you know, to make Amen. us, and uh, sometimes it takes a giant, <laughs> <laughs> you know, and who would say? Don't use that, I like polish, I like let's shine, you, you know, <laughs> no, he takes a giant to that, you know. <laughs> So it's uh, it's all in God's hands. So. Amen. Whatever you, whatever you use, yeah, it's amazing. So powerful, so powerful. I mean, yeah. it just gives us so much hope. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, no matter what you're going through, mm -hmm. God has a purpose in it, and His purpose isn't to leave you even, <laughs> or, or leave the kingdom even. The purpose is to propel the kingdom forward, to propel you forward, to propel yeah. the kingdom forward, no yeah. matter what He's allowing. Mm -hmm. Amen. And, and I know we have things on our mind when we say these things. There are mm -hmm. some things that we're just like, man, but if it would just, if it would just go away, like, like, could this be like, mm -hmm. I mean, think about the apostle Paul. He he didn't even know. Like he mm -hmm. was like, Lord, get this thorn out of my flesh. Mm -hmm. Like, like he, I, he prayed three times. I don't want to make it sound whiny, kind of like me, mm -hmm. but but he prayed three times, get this out of my flesh. Like, right. why is this here? I'm doing your work. I'm ripping snakes off of venomous snakes off my body and marching to the next location. Like, like, like I'm getting beat down and going back in the same city and preaching the gospel. Can you just remove this thorn from my flesh? But little did he know that God had a purpose for the thorn in his flesh. Amen. And, he said, and, and, and he recognized that afterward. He said he put it there to buffer me to keep me in check. In other words, right. as a good father, like there is a purpose in your thorn. Like what Amen. you're going through, there's a purpose in it. We we need to stop whining about it and try to figure out the purpose in it and pray to God and, and, and seek his face because there's a purpose in your struggle. There, there's a purpose in the thorn in your flesh. Amen. You know, and, Amen. but God could have told him that when he was kept praying, though, didn't he? Couldn't he just told him it, tell him that? Well, well, well I, I think eventually he did. Right. You know, you, you know, that's the three you know times? he, did, he I mean, didn't tell him the first time he prayed. He didn't tell him the second time he prayed. And I don't know when he told him after the third time he prayed. At some point it was communicated he to got that realization. He, he, he came to he <laughs> came to the, the place where he, he recognized that God had a purpose in his thorn. But but that wasn't God's prayer. I mean, that wasn't Paul's prayer. Paul wasn't praying, God, you know, you know, show me the purpose in this thorn. No, no, no. Paul was praying for go. the thorn. He like, wanted to go. He like, wanted to go. Want here. <laughs> like, like in some of us, we have things in our life we want uprooted out of our lives, and it's perfectly fine that we want those things uprooted. And I do think in many cases, God plans in due season to uproot that thing. But I want you to know that God has a purpose in all those obstacles. There's a purpose in the giants. There's a purpose in the thorns. There's a purpose in the persecution. There's a purpose in the ridicule. There's a purpose in the rejection. There's a purpose in the, the things that you feel like 
are horrible. There's a purpose. Why? Because all things work together for good for those who love God and those who are called according to his purpose. So we, there is a purpose in it. You are called. You love God. So whatever you're going through, there is a purpose there. Like God is going to yeah. use it to propel you forward. Yeah, and, and I, I think, love. and I think too, uh, Pastor John, that you know, just me personally. I mean, I know at some point. Um, in the past, when something happens in my life that I don't like, or something shows up, you know, I'm say, like, let's get this got this, this got to go. This is an infection. This got to go. This thing is is making me uncomfortable. Uh, but and I say lately, uh, it's not when something happens. Uh, I'm I'm quick to say I don't know why this is here, <laughs> and I'm looking I'm looking for an answer on why it's there before I start praying for it to be gone. You know, because I, yeah. I, I don't I don't want it to be here. I just want to know, is there a purpose? What do I do now? Do I work at uh, uprooting this thing? Do I work at working around it? Or do I work at being patient and going through it? I'm because I'm, I'm going to do something. That's I'm going to sit here. And I can know what is it. But I don't necessarily run to get it out of here. I got things to do. And uh, and I found that just, uh, and I mean recently, like I don't mean like in the last five years. I mean just recently <laughs> that um, <laughs> that those things are uh, are purposeful. And, and I don't get the, the actual reason why but playing it through you know say working it through walking it through you start to see and and god will reveal some things that ah, that's what that was about and that may not be what it's about in in its totality but i do get something like okay that that was all right you know and you could trust him and i think he gives us just enough to know that that was me that put that giant there <laughs> i didn't just show up at by random which i knew but right. i think purpose for you and you could see a little benefit right now i may see the real benefit 10 years from now i don't know but it's enough now to make you like yeah you know he's got this and i think he gives us that to let us know he we, he has it it's like uh uh back to the spoken word piece there you know that god's got you that, that was you know that, that's the point <laughs> that's, uh she said that, that thing was so beautiful uh, uh what she said the other day that it was like yeah wow and I think that's what we get to. We get to that point where we realize that, yeah, God really does have us. Yeah, he really does. Amen. Amen. Um, so whatever you're going through, uh, I don't know who needs to hear this. This is kind of, you know, whoever, I don't know who needs to hear this. But I want you to think about the thing that is bothering you the most in your life, the thing that, that, it's, that maybe you're under attack, maybe you're under the pressure of something. And I want you to identify this truth that God has a purpose in it. And, uh, and I do believe that God will <laughs> likely deliver you in due time. But I also believe that there's more to just his deliverance. Like he wants to put, he wants to deposit something in you through that, through that thing. And, uh, and so we just have to be humble children. I mean, <laughs> yeah, you gotta think Paul had every, I mean, you know, if I'm apostle Paul, I'm, I'm like, like, Lord, you, I just got stoned. Do I really need like, like, you know what I'm saying? Like I was shipwrecked last week and I like, do I need this? <laughs> but, uh, but, but I mean, you know, what, what was God's answer? He says, my grace is sufficient yes. uh -huh. for you. <laughs> and is God's grace not more than enough for each one of us? You know, uh, there's this, there's this famous uh, preacher, um, Nick Wovichich, I don't know if y'all know him, uh, know of him, but he's a he's a he's a preacher. He has no arms and no legs, and um, and he is just he he's a really a uh, blessing just to see his morale and his and his he, he's just praising God at all times. He never he never seems, and I'm not saying he never has a dull moment, but I'm saying he just seems to give God so much praise. I'm just like, wow, this dude is so in love with Jesus that he is just with no arm. I mean, I mean, like he seems to have no complaint in his soul. Like, like he is fully content with God and his life and everything that God has given him and blessed him with. And I, I mean, he just, I just, I need some of that. I need, I need to be fully content like that. And Pastor Darrell, I'm not there yet. I'm not a, uh, I'm not, you know, I pray, get it out. <laughs> get the thorn oh, out. Don't think I don't. <laughs> I'm not, I'm not, I'm not, I'm not, I'm not, I might afterwards be like, there was purpose in that, huh? <laughs> like, well, oh, no, I'm just... like, Lord, get it out, get, get it out of here. So, um, but, but praise the Lord, we're all different, different journeys and different places and certain things. So, uh, <laughs> 
So without further ado, we'll, we'll uh, go to the text of scripture, I guess, uh, if there's nothing else to add, Pastor Bobby or anybody else, uh, just, okay. All right. So um, I'm just going to say a quick prayer. Uh, Heavenly Father, we just come before you in Jesus' name, God. Thank you, God, for everything that you're doing. I ask God that you bless um, bless whoever right now is dealing with giants and facing uh, spiritual warfare, um, which is everybody here, uh, Father. Everybody's facing spiritual warfare, but those who are facing giants, God, those who are facing obstacles that just that they've asked to be removed, Father. I ask that you give them strength and give them purpose. And Father, in due season, kill it off. I mean, destroy the thing against them, God, but I ask God that you give them strength in it and you bless them to find purpose and peace in the midst of the storm, Lord. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. Now we're going to go to um, the book of Jude um, today and probably not going to get through this lesson fully, but I did... Um, All right. So I'm just going to go kind of verse by verse through the book of Jude. Um, obviously, we know the book of Jude is one chapter. <laughs> it's a, kind of a short, um, it's a letter, and it is uh, pr pretty short uh, in comparison to other books. Uh, hopefully, I don't know if we'll get all the way through it today, but hopefully we'll get all the way through it. Um, and... I really, I kind of didn't know what I was going to speak about today, and I felt like the Lord uh, kind of instructed this, so this is where we're at, so here we go. Um, if I could have readers uh, read the highlighted portion, and uh, that would be great. I'll have uh, DeAndre will read this one, and then uh, volunteers uh, for the other times that we're at the scripture. So, uh, DeAndre, could you read these first, these two verses? Jew, the servant of Jesus Christ and brother of James, to them that are sanctified by God the Father and preserved in Jesus Christ and called, mercy unto you and peace and love be multiplied. All right. Uh, now, I want to say this about the book of Jude kind of before I get started, um, and that is <laughs> that uh, Jude was the half brother of Jesus Christ, obviously um, God was Christ's father, but he was Mary's um, biological son. And um, he was, you know, I think he was a product of Mary and Joseph. I, I don't really know about that end of things, but I know that he was Mary's biological son. And, um, and it's interesting here that he does not um, use the fact that he was the brother of Jesus um, as something to give him authority or to, um, you know, uh, he, he just, do, he doesn't even mention the fact that he's uh, the brother of Jesus. However, you know, I do think that people in that day kind of knew who James was and they knew James, the brother of Jesus and so on and so forth. And James had, you know, James was a minister of the gospel as well at this point. And, um, and it's also kind of interesting that, that, uh, there was a point in time when Jude uh, and James were not believers. They, they were, they were skeptical about Jesus Christ. Um, it seems like that in the gospels and they, but they were witnesses. They were eyewitnesses of the resurrected Lord. They were in the upper room. They were eyewitnesses of Jesus Christ um, resurrected from the dead. And uh, this is one of the many, like, awesome, like, from an apologetic standpoint, from defending the faith, it's really cool to see guys that, that, that weren't in the camp, and but they saw Jesus raised, and they switched sides. They were like, okay, I get it now. <laughs> like, um, and, and so the brothers of Jesus uh, fall into that category. Um, and I love this word here, preserved in Jesus Christ. Doesn't it feel, I mean, that just feels good. It says, Jude, the servant 
of Jesus Christ and brother of James to them that are sanctified by the Father, by God the Father, and preserved by Jesus Christ and called. So this is a blanket letter, not to a specific, uh, it, it's kind of not that specific in terms of like, it's not going to a specific location or specific church dealing with specific problems. It is for everybody, which is what, one of the things I love about this book, because, you know, you look at things in first Timothy and second Timothy and Titus and so on and so forth, and, you, and you, you have to rightly divide there. You have to say, okay, is he talking to ministers here or is he talking to, uh, you know, preachers or teachers or, who, you know, in certain areas of those books. But in this book, this is for the same. If you are a believer in Jesus Christ, if you are preserved in Jesus Christ, if you are called, then this is for you. This letter that was written is for you. And he says, mercy unto you and peace and love be multiplied. Come another reader for these next this next verse. Beloved, when I gave all diligence to write unto you of the common salvation, it was needful for me to write unto you and exhort you that ye should earnestly contend for the faith which was once delivered unto the saints. Wow. So this, this is a lot here. So, um, so number one, this word needful here, uh, is the Greek word ananke and it, and it comes from two Greek words. It means to compress, I mean, to compress and press tight. And it's often, uh, used as necessity or something like that in certain, uh, Bible translations. Uh, but, this is a word that basically means that he felt pressured to write unto you and exhort you that you should earnestly contend for the faith. So this is a feeling of pressure by Jew to write unto believers that they should fight for the faith. Y'all know this is my kind of book, right? This is a battle cry to believers to sustain your ground and fight. A battle cry. Like when I look at the, the book of Jude, this is like the reason it was written. Like he he initially, it seemed like he gave all diligence here uh, to write unto you about the common salvation. I mean, and, and there's there's lots of elements of salvation and, and purification and everything. God, sanctification, what God is doing in us, uh, uh, like what. Certain niche. In, in the in the area of salvation, he says, "Here's here's the main thing that I'm I'm writing about that you should And when we think about earnestly contend, you know, this is talking about like the, the word the word there. Um, it, it comes from the Greek word um, to agonize or to like struggle." But this is like, this is like a war, you know, this is a war zone. It's a battle cry. We should fight. I mean, imagine if, I mean, number one, you know, we serve a God who doesn't lose battles. We, we see all these battles God wins over and over again. And it's kind of cool because God is calling us as believers to like fight. Now, now we are not fighting with flesh and blood, uh, but against principalities and powers and spiritual wickedness in high places, right? But 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 we are here as warriors to fight for the kingdom of God, to earnestly contend for the faith um, that was what it was um, for the faith which was once delivered unto the saints. Once delivered unto the saints. So, uh, you know, when I when I look at this once delivered for the saints, <laughs> you know, it kind of throws a wrench in the game of all these false prophets that have arisen who have gained notoriety in the world. You know, many other false prophets have gained no notoriety, but like guys like Muhammad, who came afterwards and, and taught about another way, who claimed that Jesus was just a, you know, a prophet and so on and so forth. And, and it had many other false doctrines. It was not, he claimed that Jesus was not the son of God. Joseph Smith, 
who distorted the person of Jesus Christ, uh, distorted uh, who God is um, in many, many ways uh, that we won't get into because they are so irreverent. I don't even like to utter them. Um, and any others who attempted to bring a new revelation to the church concerning the gospel, concerning the good news, concerning this common salvation that is being talked about by, by Jews. Like this, this situation, like what we have now is the same thing the apostles taught then. Like what we understand about salvation, Jesus Christ, the death, burial, and resurrection of Jesus Christ, it has not changed. It is the same. It, there, there's not going to be somebody that comes years later and i'm not saying that there's no such thing as revelation by god there is god still reveals things to us god sp still speaks through us and reveals things to us by revelation but any revelation concerning salvation or, or some new some new way to get saved oh oh joseph smith comes along and said oh y'all have it all wrong you guys are all wrong well actually the bible says that it was once delivered to the like like this is the this is the same story. It says it was once delivered unto the same. It wasn't twice delivered. Which time are you, Joseph Smith? Are you the thirteenth deliverance to the saints? Are you the you know Muhammad? Are you the twelfth deliverance? Like where do you guys fall in this order? Because the Bible I read says that this salvation that we speak of. This faith that we're fighting for was once delivered unto the saints. So anything after that is, is, is a gimmick, a trick, or something that's not of God, because the Bible clearly states here that this is this faith that we're fighting for has been delivered. It's here. It already has arrived. Now, the only thing that can happen now is what? somebody could come and pervert or distort something that's already arrived. Um, so we have to be really careful there. I'm going to read this verse. It says, for there are certain men crept in unawares who were before of old ordained to this condemnation, ungodly men, turning the grace of, of our God into lasciviousness and denying the only Lord God and our Lord Jesus Christ. Now, I'm not sure, when, when I look at this scripture, I'm not sure how direct, I think some of these men are directly denying the Lord Jesus Christ. They're saying that he's not, like Muhammad, for instance, came and said, oh, he's not the son of God, right? And there's others that, that, that you know, they kind of, they, they craft it differently and they just try to draw people into lasciviousness and, and, and lascivious is like worldly attitude towards everything, like just sensuality and, and uh, skin, uh, drawing those ideas into the body and, and, and thereby denying. I, I hear somebody, did somebody clear the throat or they have something to say? Okay. Um, so now I want you, I want you to notice it says there are certain men that crept in unaware. These guys aren't just coming in with a, you know, a, a orange jumpsuit. Like they just broke out of prison <laughs> or the white lines they used to have back in the day. Right. Uh, these guys are coming in and nobody knows that they are truly these condemned people. Now, why do I say they're condemned? Because the Bible says who were before of old ordained to this condemnation. So these are imitators. They're, 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 they're pretending to be a good leader or a maybe even a saint. But in actuality, God saw them coming. <laughs> like, 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 like they're ungodly men. And they're, 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 their mission their mission is to turn the grace of our God, the gift that God has given us, the, 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 the blood of Jesus Christ, everything that God's given us, he's freed us from the shackles of sin. He, he, we're no longer under the law, but we're under grace. They're, they want to turn all that, the grace of God, into lasciviousness. Um, 
it's interesting, you know, I, I often say, and I'm not sure, I'm not actually sure how true the statement I make is, but almost every New Testament, I, I always say every, I'm not sure about James, actually, the more I think about it, but almost every New Testament author warns us at some point, and, and I didn't have time to, I didn't want to have every single warning because it would be like a whole nother Bible study, and I'm not going to read all these anyway, but most every New Testament author warns the flock, warns the body of Christ about um, false teachers and false prophets and false ministers of the gospel. Like, like this is a common theme throughout the New Testament. Jesus warns over and over again. This is just one of the places where he says in Matthew 7, 15, beware of false prophets, which come to you in sheep's clothing, but inwardly they are ravening wolves. Um, Paul told Timothy, the apostle Paul said, for the time will come when they will not endure sound doctrine, but after their own lust, they will heap to themselves teachers having itching ears and they shall turn away their ears from the truth and shall turn unto fables. Um, Peter, and like I said, this is not exhaustive. I'm not, this is not all the places he, the apostle Paul warned against false teachers in almost every letter he wrote. So um, like, like I'm, I'm, I'm plucking out one or two, but Peter in second Peter two, he says, but there were false prophets also among the people, even as there shall be false teachers among you who privately shall bring in damnable heresies, even denying the Lord that bought them and bring upon themselves swift destruction. John in first John four, one says, beloved, believe not every spirit, but try the spirits, whether they are of God, because many false prophets are gone out into the world. Now, I say this to say there is a sense of urgency in these biblical writers that, that we as a, this is not, by the way, just the pastor or the preacher's prerogative. This is our prerogative as believers. Each one of us has to, has to take this responsibility of steering clear of false prophets and false teachers as best we can. Like, like by the power of God, we're supposed to recognize and avoid to the, to the extent that we can these type of people. All right. Um, now, this is Paul speaking. The author here is Luke. Um, it's the book of Acts. But or the author here, uh, I believe, is Luke, I should say. Um, but in Acts chapter 20, the apostle Paul says, take heed therefore unto yourselves and to all the flock over which the Holy Ghost hath made you overseers to feed the church of God, which he hath purchased with his own blood. For I, for I know this, that after my departing shall grievous wolves enter in among you, not sparing the flock. Also of your own selves shall men arise. Now listen to this. This is so intense. Speaking perverse things to draw away disciples after them. Therefore, watch and remember by the space of three years, I cease not to warn you every, oh, I'm sorry, warn every one of you night and day with tears. So here Paul is saying that, that I, in your presence, like while I was in your presence, I was literally crying. De like, like all the time trying to warn you that these ravenous wolves, these they would not spare the flight. They were going to people rise up even among you guys. There's going to be people like that dude over there eating soup over there. He might rise like, like the people among you are going to rise up and they're going to try to draw away disciples of themselves. They're not going to spare the flock. It is the devil's prerogative to destroy you through false teachers and false prophets and those that cannot lead you astray. Which, which is which is so intense. Like, I don't think, like, the seriousness here 
I mean, think about how serious. I'm not sure what they talked about every day. Obviously, they probably talked about the cross. They probably talked about, I mean, if you're with the Apostle Paul, you're probably asking him a question about the third heaven. I mean, I'm not sure exactly all the questions on your list for the Apostle Paul would be. But, like, this is something that the Apostle Paul is like, dude, I've been talking about this over and over and over and over and over again and not just talking with tears. There was a passion behind this preaching. There was a passion behind this warning that Paul was given, so much so that, that, that he can declare that I was, you know, night and day with tears. I was telling you about this night and day with tears. This is going to happen and has happened. And it's serious business and something that all believers are responsible for on some level. And by responsible for, I mean responsible for avoiding, responsible for marking, responsible for uh, uh, rejecting. Um, we have a responsibility in this, and uh, and that responsibility is very serious and could have, and I think, great consequences not living up to that responsibility. Um, can I have another reader, please? I will therefore put you in remembrance, though you once knew this, how that the Lord, having saved the people out of the land of Egypt, afterward destroyed them that believed not. And the angels which kept not their first estate, but left their own habitation, he hath reserved in everlasting change chains under darkness unto the judgment of the great day. Even as Sodom and Gomorrah and the cities about them in like manner, giving themselves over to fornication and going after strange flesh are set forth for an example, suffering the vengeance of eternal fire. Amen. Thank you. Um, so, so now I want you to understand this is, I, I don't believe that this is actually talking about the believers that Jude is writing to. This is actually talking about the punishment that is set forth for these individuals, the men who are crept in unaware, uh, you know, unawares. And I think the context supports that, um, especially as we keep uh, reading this particular passage. Uh, and he uses things that happen in the Old Testament, like, like when, when God's wrath fell on certain uh, communities and, and people groups because of sins that they had committed, and because they did not understand God's order. And, and, and um, when you look at most of these situations, there is an element of order here, uh, in my opinion, that has not been obeyed by man. Um, <laughs> so when we, when we go to, I'm not going to get deeply into, into these uh, storylines, because that, that just... <laughs> We'll be here all day, you know? <laughs> but uh, but we we know these to some extent um, that you know this. I, I think chat, uh, verse six is referring to the Nephilim talked about in Genesis, um, and God has reserved this these this this punishment. And I do believe that there. I think that this is actually referring to these individuals ending up in hell. Um, this is referring to these, these people have crept in unaware that God has reserved under condemnation. Um, th th this, this appears to, to kind of point to that. Although I'm not saying that this eternal fire, you know, I, that's just my, uh, theology thought process on that. So, uh, we're going to go to, uh, this next passage. Can somebody else read here? I can get it. Uh, likewise. Okay, go ahead. I'm sorry. Likewise, also these fifty dreamers defile the flesh, despise dominion, and speak evil of dignities. Yet Michael, the archangel, which contended with the devil, he disputed about the body of Moses, does not bring against him a railing accusation but said, the Lord rebuked thee. 
but these speak evil of those things which they know not, but what they know naturally as brute beasts in those things they corrupt themselves. There's a level of reverence that we are as, as believers and just as humans, really. I mean, but, but particularly as believers, we, we should even know better. Um, there's certain reverence that we should have towards spiritual things that we don't know anything about. None of us, you know, we don't know what, we don't know everything that takes place in heaven, for instance. We don't know everything about spiritual things. We don't know everything about uh, God and, and the devil. Like, we, we don't. We, we don't know. And, and, um, and it's important that we respect and, and we respect God's order in dealing with the enemy, the, the devil, um, and with, with other you know, spiritual forces and so on and so forth. Uh, this is an interesting thing here because um, it says these filthy dreamers, they defile the flesh. They despise dominion. It makes me think of all these people in the text. We're going to talk about a couple here in this next uh, script, these next few scriptures. But, but, but many times a key, um, a key element to the, the, these, these evil teachers, these guys that come in and they, they, they don't have a reverence for God's order. They don't have a reverence for authority and they despise dominion. They despise, uh, uh, they have, a, they're, they're irreverent. <laughs> you know, they're irreverent. They speak evil of dignities. Um, now look at the example he gives here. Now, obviously this is an extreme example because in verse eight, he's talking about like humans, like, like he, to, to, to a great degree, I think he's talking about human dignities, right? He's talking about just, you know, but you know, I think you could, you could probably suggest that he's talking about God as well in that, in that verse, but certainly human dignity, they despise authority and, and human, uh, you know, and the pastor and stuff like that. Right. But but when you look at uh, verse nine, this says, yet Michael, the archangel. Now, what does Michael have to do with this? The archangel, when he continued with the body of, of Moses, when he was dealing with the body of Moses, and, and we won't get into that story. But uh, but when he was de uh, dealing with the body of Moses, there was there was a confrontation. There was some warfare, spiritual warfare between Michael, the archangel and Satan contending for the body of Moses. We don't know all the details of that. The Bible doesn't explicitly say. We get to peel back the curtains here and see see some interesting things. Uh, us Bible nerds are like, wow, that's, uh, I want to dig into that, right? <laughs> but this says that, that Michael, he didn't dare. He didn't dare bring against Satan a railing accusation, but said, the Lord rebuke thee. Now that's order. When you, when you want, like now, now you'll go to churches. I, I could drive down the street to a church. And if I, if I went to enough, I'd probably hear somebody screaming, you dirty devil, or, you know, um, I, pe people talk crazy, the devil, like, like they really know what's, what's, what's happening. But the Bible says that Michael, the archangel don't even do that. Like, like, like little old us, we, we, like, you, you devil, you, you. We're not supposed to, we, we don't conduct ourselves like that. The Bible says, resist the devil and he will flee from you. It doesn't say have a conversation with the devil. It doesn't say, you know, talk noise to the devil and he will flee from you. It says, resist the devil. And he will flee. Our job with the devil, our only job when it comes to the devil is resist him and, 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 under, and have the, the scripture hidden in our hearts that we might not sin against our Lord. Like, like, like we're not, we're not designed, we're not designed to, now, every now and then I do think God can empower us to, to cast out demons and he can empower us to do certain things towards the devil. But even when we do those things, we're not sitting there hurling accusations and talking crazy to the devil and stuff like that. We don't understand spiritual things enough to do that. We have to have a reverence towards God and the, and spiritual things in general. Why? Because we don't understand. We're not prideful enough to assume that we know about things that God has not revealed fully to us. So instead of us parading around like, like, like we just, we understand everything, what we need to do is commit it to him. The Lord rebuked thee. And, and, and it wasn't like that, the, the, uh, it wasn't like that Michael did not fight the devil. He was fighting. His rebuke was his fighting. 
Him saying the Lord rebuked thee, that was his fighting the devil. He was fighting in the, in the, in the order that God has designed, that God has designated. He was in order with God's plan. So we don't just fight the way we want to fight. I might want to join, I might want to, you know, politically win people to Christ. Maybe I should run for office and force everybody in the United States, you know, if, if, if I got to the president, force everybody in the United States to, to become a Christian, right? That's not God's plan. Like that is not, that's out of order. I've, I probably have okay intentions. I'm not really sure, but that is not God's plan. So I have to worry about order here. And in this case, the Bible says, even Michael, the archangel, like, like this is not just a regular angel. This is Michael. This is a bad dude, destroys cities. When Michael shows up, enemies of God die, period, like, like throughout the scripture. But even he understands order and reverences spiritual things. Now, it's not like we're talking about some holy prophet. This is the devil he's dealing with. And he simply says, the Lord rebuked thee. I think we can all learn reverence from the archangel Michael. This is one lesson that we can actually learn from Michael, the archangel. And that is reverence. Just reverence spiritual things. That's why I don't go, you know, when I when I know a person's been messing with witchcraft, I don't go and say, oh, that, that, that doesn't work on me. I'm a child of God. I don't have to say any of that. I just resist them. <laughs> like, 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 I don't have to prove, I don't have to talk noise to the enemies of God to, to have the hedge of protection that God has for me, to have the to have everything that the name of God provides, the safety of God's hands. Um, I mean, it, it has nothing to do with me saying all that stuff. I, I can have confidence in God and be reverence toward things I don't understand. I don't understand witchcraft and don't want to. The Bible said to, the Bible uh, says to avoid that type of thing. So that's what I choose to do. I'm not going to read a book to understand it. I'm not going to, you know, I'm not going to uh, start talking noise to witches and warlocks. And uh, yeah, I, I'm not, I don't have to do all that. I just trust in the Lord. And that's it. <laughs> that's my job. And I don't, I don't have to prove how big God is by how big my words are. I just have to simply say, the Lord rebuke thee. I, I, I just have to simply stay in God's order and how God wants to handle things. Sorry for dealing with that point so long, but uh, it, it's just something that I see. I, I see a lot of error here uh, it, it be, because it's so easy. It's so easy to just look at the things that enemy done and to hate him or to try to, you know, say things to him. But what we have to focus on is our God and what, how, his order. And, and we know the enemy's end. We don't have to say nothing. Like, like, he ain't going to be destroyed until he's destroyed. And God's told us when he's going to be destroyed. So that's it. <laughs> like, like there, there's no, we don't have to be in between that. His day is coming. It says, but these, these type of people, these people that creep in, these people that distort the truth, that try to draw crowds and draw disciples away, these speak evil of those things which they know not. But what they know naturally as brute beast and those things, they corrupt themselves. Because, and, and this is, a like I said, once again, it is an issue of irreverence more than anything else. And this is what, what Jude says. He says, woe unto them, they have gone in the way of Cain and have ran greedily after the Aram of Balaam for reward and perished in the gainsaying of Kor. These are spots in your feasts for chari of charity when they feast with you, feeding themselves without fear. <laughs> I mean, this picture is kind of funny to me. Like, like, I mean, it's so hilarious. He said these people are in your, in your, like, at your church dinners. I mean, that's what that means. These people are at your church dinners and they just eating. They don't even realize that, that they got a target on their back. The archangel Michael has a sword drawn. They don't even know. Like, like they're just, 
They just think that they, they, I mean, they think they're in. They're feeding themselves without fear. But the Bible says this, in the next verse, it says clouds, or in the, the middle of that verse, it says clouds, they are without water. Carried about of winds, trees whose fruits withereth, without fruit, twice dead, plucked up by the roots. Now, I don't know why the Bible says twice dead, but I don't want to be in that category. <clears throat> I don't want the Bible to call me twice dead, because dead is dead, like, it's, it's pretty bad. But twice dead, I'm not sure if there's some spiritual significance there of, of it saying twice dead, but it's very, very clear that Jude has a very, very low opinion of these individuals that have crept in unaware who are trying to distort and pervert the gospel, the truth of the word of God, trying mm. to overthrow the faith of many. Does somebody have something to say there? Well, that's pretty tough language. <laughs> <laughs> it's tough. <laughs> It's tough. He says, raging waves of the sea foaming out their own shame, wandering stars to whom is reserved the blackness of darkness forever. Now, I don't know if they understood about like black holes in this time. Uh, in, in, in like, because it's like really early. Like this is written like, you know, in the first, before before year hundred, this was written. So so you got to think. I don't know what scientifically. So, but this sounds like a black hole that he, he's describing here. Like like to whom is reserved the blackness of darkness forever? Like wandering stars to whom is reserved the blackness of darkness forever? Like you're supposed to be shining, but instead you're 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 literally like your job. A star's job is to shine, but they're reserved to be. Like they're purposed to be black forever. That is that is intense. Um, and by the way, I want you to notice the uses of the word uh, "reserved" and "preserved" in, in, in the in this uh, particular book. I, I like. I think it's, they're used several times. It's interesting here, but these particular individuals are reserved for this judgment, and it's intense. Unless, and you think about. Cain, we know that Cain killed Abel. All right, Balaam, Balaam was greedy and, and instead of listening to God's first command to not go, uh, to not curse the people, he, he asked God a second time and God allowed him to leave, although God did not allow him to curse the people. Um, but he almost died because of that. The, the angel's sword was drawn. Like I said before, the sword is drawn and, and these people, and we don't even know, like, some of us don't realize that what we're doing, like, or, well, they don't realize, these individuals don't realize that the sword is being drawn on behalf of, of those people that they're trying to corrupt. Um, and the Bible says, and perished in the gain saying of Kor. Now think about what Kor did. Kor is like, Korah is, is who they're referring to in the Old Testament, who Actually, uh, he led a rebellion against Moses. He said, aren't we all anointed by God? Why are we listening to this one dude? Aren't we all anointed? And they and they like led this big rebellion against God. And, and, and Moses said, God's going to do a, do a new thing. And this, he said, he said, if you're right, then cool. But if, if I'm right, God's going to perform a new thing. And, and God made the earth come, the earth's mouth opened up and started eating them. Just imagine that. The earth's mouth opened up and ate all those people who rebelled after Cor the Korah rebellion. I mean, and, and this is, these are these type of people who, 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 who cause damage. Um, they come in and they try to cause damage. And I want, and the Bible says, and Enoch also the seventh from Adam. Now I love how the Bible does this. I'm going to pause right there. Uh, the Bible is so clear about who it's talking about. It's unbelievable. Like, because there's more than one Enoch. So the Bible wanted to make sure we know which Enoch it's referring to. And by the way, think about how thorough the Bible is. It's naming every single name in generations. 
Like every generation is, there is nothing like the Bible. I love the, the word of God. There's nothing like the Holy Scriptures. They name every single name. But the Bible is, it's like a filing cabinet for truth, like certain aspects of the Bible. And, and, and here it says the seventh from Adam. I'm just throwing that in there. I'm sorry. I just love the text. Sorry. <laughs> it says, and Enoch also, the seventh from Adam, prophesied of the saying, behold, the Lord cometh with 10,000 of his saints to execute judgment upon all and to convince all that are ungodly among them of all their ungodly deeds, which they have ungodly committed. There's a lot of ungodlies there. <laughs> and of all their hard speeches, which ungodly sinners have spoken against him. Now, it's it says these are murmurers and complainers walking after their own lusts and their mouth speaketh great swelling words, having men's persons in, in admiration because of advantage. Now, in here it says these are murmurers and complainers. And sometimes we kind of clump those two together. But in the Greek, these are very distinct terms. Murmurers is what you think it is. It's just people who murmur. And, you know, complainers are people who breed discontent they they they're they they are they are they are like there to cause discontentment <laughs> like and, and i mean we all know people and some people are in like in the like in your church home wherever your church home is if it's our home in our church home like they are there they're trying to cause problems they're trying to complain about this or that all oh, the donuts aren't cold enough or you know are warm enough or the the, the the coffee i'm not saying the donuts shouldn't be warm or anything but why i'm saying like like stop trying to cause discontentment don't you know that evil doers do that like like don't cause discontentment but there are those that are that are that's just what they do that, that's what they're they're there to do that and these are murmurs, complainers, and they're walking after their own lusts, and their mouth speaking great swelling words, having men's persons in admiration because of advantage. I mean, they do not have your best interest at heart. But beloved, remember ye the words which are spoken before of the apostles of our Lord Jesus Christ, how that they told you that there should be mockers in the last time who should walk after their own ungodly lusts. These be they who separate themselves, sensual, having not the spirit. Now, when we look at this, this is kind of, this kind of is what we were talking about earlier, how every single New Testament author warned the people against um, this. And it says, remember ye the words which were spoken before of the apostles of our Lord Jesus Christ. And, and now understand Jude was not an apostle. So he, he was the brother of Jesus. He was an eyewitness of the resurrection, but he was not an apostle. This particular Jude was not an apostle. Um, so uh, it's important to note that he, he's saying that these words were written, that they warned you about this before it happened, that this type of person would rise up and they wouldn't even have the spirit. Um, this is serious business. It says, where are we on time? I'm sorry. I, I don't know. Got two, more, two more sections. So. It says, but ye beloved, building up yourselves on your most holy faith. What's the answer to all this corruption, to, to the fact that there are going to be wheat and tares? There's going to be tares. There's going to be people who are not there from the Lord. There's going to be, that, that, that is a given. Jude is making it very clear. This is going to happen. Paul, Peter, John, all these guys, they're, Jesus, they all made it clear that this is going to happen. Um. But this says, what, what's the answer to that? Number one, remember that the, what the apostles said about it. Like, they, like this is something that's foretold. It's not like some, um, it's not something that is going to catch you by surprise. To the contrary, be prepared, be steadfast, be ready. You know it's coming. And it says, but ye beloved, 
building up yourselves on your most holy faith, praying in the Holy Ghost. So what are we supposed to do in response to all this stuff? Number one, we're supposed to, we're supposed to continue building our faith. And, and part of how we do that is by praying in the Holy Ghost, being led by God as we pray, by prayer, <laughs> by prayer. <laughs> Keep yourselves in the love of God. Build holy faith, praying in the Holy Ghost. Keep yourselves in the love of God, looking for the mercy of our Lord Jesus Christ unto eternal life. Keep hope alive. Keep looking for the Lord. And, and if some have compassion. Now, 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 number one, I think that the first initial thing is, what we're supposed to do for ourselves as individuals, we're supposed to uh, we're supposed to basically focus on building our faith. We're supposed to be praying in the Holy Spirit. We're supposed to uh, keep ourselves in the love of God and, and look for His mercy and 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 and, and, and a hope of eternal life. Like we're supposed to be looking towards that. That's supposed to be our focus. What we're what we're what our eyes are focused on. And then it says. And this second part, I think, is for others. It's for how we are to deal with others, like those who are under our care as believers. And by the way, this is not written to pastors. This is not written for, remember, this is not written to just the evangelists and pastors and ministers. This is written to those who are called, <laughs> those, who, those who believe. This is written to saints. And it says, and some have compassion making the making a difference uh, and others save with fear pulling them out of the fire hating even the garments spotted by the flesh now i don't know all the all the distinctions between these two people groups some the people that we're supposed to have compassion on to draw them into christ to draw them into a deeper relationship with jesus christ to fulfill our ministry here on the earth as, as individuals towards god and those that we are to save uh, with fear by pu like pulling them out of the fire like some people we got to say with fear and say hey, look the lord don't deal like that the lord don't, the lord ain't in all that uh, and and i think also you know we think about how the apostle paul taught us to deal with brothers who have who are just in outright ridiculous sins he talks about this this group of people who are who have the when he talks to the first corinthian church he talks about this group of, of people who were sleeping with their fathers, wives, and, and doing all this wicked stuff. And he says, don't even eat with these people. And, and then he says, you know, the way you deal with these people is you just, you release them to Satan so that, that, you know, you release them to Satan, basically reject, like cut them off and you let him beat them up and, and, and maybe they'll come crawling back, right? Now I'm paraphrasing that big time, but maybe they'll come crawling back. And, and you know, I think that maybe that's part of this. But, but but we have to rightly divide as believers how to approach different people. Like some people, we are supposed to like embrace them and draw them in with compassion. Other people, we need to like tell them about like hell, like, like explain to them what's at stake here. Um, or, or do, there might be a more harsh uh, way of dealing with certain people in certain circumstances to contend earnestly for the faith. Remember that that is the that this is a battle cry to contend earnestly for the faith. So he's saying this is what you do. Now this is what these people are. This is how they are. They're they're just like th these people groups and this is what you do. You 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 keep to your holy faith, you pray in the holy ghost. You uh you keep yourselves in the love of God. You look to the mercy, you look to eternal life. And this is how you contend for the faith. You have compassion to some and others you save with fear, pulling them out of the fire, hating even the garment spotted with flesh. And I love this salutation. This is probably the, the, the most popular uh, uh, verse in the book of John, uh, Jude is this, this 24th verse. It says, now unto him that is able to keep you from falling.
Now, I love that because, because this whole book is like a warning to not fall. Like, like he's explaining to them, hey, look, this is what falling looks like. Don't do it. Don't listen to these people. This is how they act. Like, and, 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 and we have to do this and this and this. And this is how these people are. But then at the end of it, he says, now unto him that is able to keep you from falling. Like God is able to keep you from falling. Like he is the reason you're not going to fall because he's able. And he's going to protect you even though there are going to be false brothers, even though they will deceive many. Jesus said in Matthew 24, 24, that they may deceive even the very elect. If it were possible, sorry, let me, let me add that in. If it were possible, they would deceive you the very last. Sorry, my memory was slow, so plain. So, so that means the deception is going to be so great. Now, obviously, it's not possible, or it wouldn't say if it were possible, but it, in brackets, but it says if it were possible, they would deceive even the very last. That means their persuasion is going to be great. They're going to come with signs and wonders, and they are going to be able to draw you out if. There was, it wasn't for verse 24, <laughs> the fact that there's somebody else in this equation. It's not just the devil and the false prophets and the men unawares and all these, these evildoers. There's also a him that can keep you. That's God. <laughs> now unto him that is able to keep you from falling and to present you faultless before the presence of of his glory with exceeding joy. I mean, I don't know if that's his joy or our joy, but it's probably going to be both. I know I'm going to be joyous when I present a faultless with all the faults that I get, with all the sins that I that are on my resume. I'm going to love being faultless before the King of King and Lord of Lords. I mean, it's going to be beautiful. Sorry for <laughs> um, to the only wise God our Savior, be glory and majesty, dominion and power, both now and forever. Amen. Uh, Pastor Daryl. Amen. Thank the Lord for uh, another uh, great lesson uh, in Jude. And it uh, reminds me a little bit about, uh, well, it kind of goes hand in hand with uh, what Pastor Bobby did in Sunday school a couple weeks ago. In Galatians, um, and the churches, the church is you know constantly under attack, and we talked, you know, we talked that day is mostly from outside, where you know we're being bombarded with different uh, attacks, and uh, Jude spells it out here nicely, and this is why well, such a, a relevant lesson tonight is that uh, a lot of times you know when we are under attack, you know, you hear people sing a song that I never lost my praise and. I never lost my smile and things happen, but you know, I still got my this and I still got my that. And, and Jude said, you could, this and that is not the thing. Um, but we're going to fight and it's time to fight and they're going to fight for the faith. That's it. The faith. That's, that's it. And you can let, let them have whatever else you have to, but you don't compromise on the faith and reading the book of Acts and it was always confirming those in the faith, the faith keeps in the faith all through the book of Acts about the church. So we have the faith uh, and what, what, what saved us. And that's that whole gospel message, faith in Jesus Christ. You can't compromise on that. And so Jude introduces that, you know, it's even inside now. So there's no place for us to let our guards down. <clears throat> I think that's the message here. Don't let your guards down. Uh, keep the dukes up. It's time to fight. And, um, I think I'd encourage everyone to just read this again. It's a short book. Uh, just just read it again and uh, understand that it is time to fight. And uh, and then he tells them how to fight, which he went through in the last few verses. Uh, is build ourselves up on our most holy faith. So it still comes back to the, the battle, and the attack is to rob you of the faith. And you build yourself up on your own faith and then help others. And um, you're going to win. You know, God keep you from falling. So I, I think it's a great lesson. Um, and it just, and, and even in Jude's case, he said it wasn't, no one knew it was time to fight. Everybody, everybody thought it was fine for everything else. And just like, I guess, for us today, if you don't think it's time to fight, this message is for you. If you, if you think it's time to just take it easy and relax and enjoy, 
uh, this is for you. It, it's not time to sit on our leaves. It's not time to, you know, just, you know, be at peace. Uh, it, it's actually fighting time. And that's how we, we are under attack. And I think it's a great uh, and timely message because we, the church is under attack and it is about the faith. So um, uh, we get all digested all and, and be these great, great warriors of the faith. So beautiful. Thank you. Pastor Bobby. <clears throat> amen. I just want to say amen. A very uh, well taught lesson, very thoroughly researched. Man, I really appreciate the um, effort and all the things uh, Pastor John they bring out of this. Just so good and so rich. Just so uh, good. Uh, and I ain't nobody mad you for getting excited, man. <laughs> you, you, preach, you preach tonight. You preach that word tonight. And I think it encouraged all of us. I think so many of our lessons here recently have been along this path. And I uh, just really. Um, just, just appreciate God. I was um, always connecting, you know, yellow, I'm always connecting the dots. And I was thinking about the um, song Haley ministered to, to us. Well, you can't say she sang yesterday. She ministered. She, <laughs> she puts in mind, Sister Smith, she, she just ministers. <laughs> and, uh, she, uh, but she was saying um, uh, you know, her confidence, yeah, you know, she she can rest in God's promises. His promises are yes and amen. But she says she can rest in His promises and uh, her confidence is in His faithfulness. And uh, for Pastor John to come back with, uh, you know, uh, uh, God is able to keep us from falling. Uh, you know, this this thing about achieving rest is kind of it's very difficult. Just resting in your promises, which means you have peace in the midst of whatever's going on. Uh, and and so many of our um, messages here lately have been you know just holding on and just waiting seem like we're just getting close and close to the end i'm listening to messages but man god's just telling us hold on a little bit longer just a bit longer and uh, he shall come will come just seems like we're just getting close and close to that day and uh hey was saying about resting god's uh, promises uh, and her confidence in his faithfulness and well, what's his resume that we should you know have confidence in his faithfulness well he's the one who spoke the world's existence <laughs> let there be a prayer let there be light <laughs> let the dry land appear you know this is this is why we can have confidence in, in his faithfulness uh it's just um the scripture that was read tonight goes right in line with his resume or is it part of his resume and we can have assurances. This is who we're dealing with. So He is able to keep us, and we can rest in His in His in His uh, in His promises. And uh, and and, and uh, just it, our confidence lies in His faithfulness. So I just really was blessed by this and uh, this lesson, uh, Pastor John, put out tonight. I think is one that should be viewed many times. And again, so many of our lessons, saints have been along this line. Continue with faith. Don't let go. Hold on. Just seem like the Lord just saying, "Hey, it's almost over. This thing's almost over." So let's just um, let, 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 let's hold fast the profession of our faith without wavering uh, and uh, remain confident uh, <laughs> him and his heat is able uh, uh, to deliver uh, uh, deliver us and keep us from falling. Um, I just, uh, the only wise God, to him be glory. Yeah, it's all about him. So again, I just appreciate uh, the meaty, the meaty, meaty lesson we had tonight. Uh, that's all I have to say. Amen. Back to, I'll give you Ms. Harper. Let me off. Okay, there we are. Every time I hear that ver that a uh, verse now to him who is able to keep us from falling and present us faultless, I can hear Dad's voice every single time I hear and read that scripture because he loved that scripture. We said it at the parting of every service every Sunday, oh. <laughs> and so it just reminds me. It's really a happy thought for me. And uh, it was a good lesson tonight. I really enjoyed the lesson, all of it. Um, everything that happened tonight, I enjoyed it so much. And uh, I want to also give another shout out to the youth because they are really great with volunteering and coming forth. And I just really, really appreciate that so much. At this time, we're going to ask Sister Dolores, would she uh, do our closing prayer for us tonight? I want to ask you all to continue to keep my family and my son in your prayers. And my granddaughter going to be going to Langston on the 24th. Keep her in your prayers. Miss Kyla. Amen. Can we bow before the throne? Heavenly Father, we come to you in Jesus' name. God, we want to thank you, Lord, for your word, God. 
We thank you, God, that your word is true, God. Your word is something we can relish on, God, and take full assurance in that what you've said, God, will come to pass. God, we come to you in Jesus' name. God, we thank you for just being God and you being God all by yourself. We thank you that we have the privilege of calling you Father because you call us your children. God, we ask right now in the name of Jesus that you would bless your man of God who brought forth the word of God on tonight, Lord. Continue to let him have that same zeal and boldness and passion each and every day, God, as he crosses the paths of many, God. We ask that you bless all of our ministers and elders and deacons and evangelists and everybody on this call right now under the sound of my voice, God. You know every situation, you know every circumstance, God. Those things that seem like giants to us, God, you call light afflictions. Father God, and we know that you know every circumstance, every situation. More importantly, God, you know how it's going to end, God. Give us to continue to fully trust you, God. You've shown yourself mighty. You've shown yourself strong, God. You've shown yourself faithful, God. We have our own individual history with you, God. Let us rely on that, God, that what you said will come to pass. You are not a man that you should lie, God. If you said it, it will come to pass. God, we ask that you uh, honor the prayer requests on tonight. Those are minister Harper's God. Those that are on the minds of your people, God, you know each and every one of us individually. You know us collectively, God. You know what we stand in need of, Father God, and we know that we can trust you because you are able. God, as we get ready to leave this service, but not your presence, God, because you're forever with us, for you promise to never leave us nor forsake us, God. And we thank you for that, Lord. We ask that you would bless every home in the name of Jesus. Meet every need, God. Strengthen everybody, God. Everybody on this call, God. Give us to know that you're always with us, no matter what we face, God. That you are our Father, and you love us with an everlasting love. And again, we can trust you with all things. And it is in Jesus' name we pray. We give you all honor and all glory. And we say in faith, amen. Amen. Thank you so much. This concludes our, serve, our uh, Bible study tonight. You can stay on the line and visit. Or if you have to leave, then we just will say good night to you. But thank you so much for joining us. We want you to take the words and the scripture and the, everything to heart and take it with you and think about it.